Hello and welcome back to the Last Dance Photoshop tutorial series. In episode one, we covered document setup, the layers panel in the bottom right, and a few basic tools alongside cutting out a subject or removing the background. In this episode, we're going to be talking about blend modes and image adjustments. Now, the two of those basically give your image a little bit of depth that draws the eye a little bit more. So hopefully you'll be able to follow along if you still are. And I think where we got to on the last episode was we were at this stage where we've got our three layers down the bottom corner, the background layers, and our one original layer that's turned off. And we had our cutout with mask layer sitting on top. Now what we're going to do is, now that we've cut them out, is we're going to sort of position that how we might want it to look finally. So at the moment it's just sitting in the middle of the document. Um, we had it slightly in so that we could get the cutout done, but now we're going to move it and position it a little bit more like how we want it to finally look. Maybe something like that. So you can go you can drop this off of the edges of the artboard, that doesn't matter, that won't be showing up. So basically if you drop it below, beyond the edge there, this is how it's going to look. It'll just cut that a little bit off, so maybe something like this is a is quite a good composition. Now, now that we have that in place, what we want to do is really give this image a little bit more drama to it, a little bit, something that draws the eye a little bit more, because at the moment it's just a couple of gradients in the background and a cutout on top and it's quite clearly just stuck straight on the top there so what we want to do is go to this website which is called freestocktextures.com now this has a, quite a wide bank of different types of images that we can download um, a lot of them are just sort of rough looking textures but they're actually really good for creating that sort of grunge effect that you would maybe look for in a graphic. So if you download that, um, this is a good website, a lot of different um, types of texture on there, but I think this is the one that will maybe, maybe be most effective for us. So if you go and download that texture, I already have it downloaded in this folder. So you just want to navigate to where you've saved it, open that up and similar to what we did with our original photo, you just want to drag it in and that should drop itself straight into the document there. Now you want to hold Alt and you want to just scale that up. Alt or Control on a, a PC, I might add. One thing you maybe don't want to do is just go back there. Um, you don't really want to hold Shift in Photoshop. Um, Photoshop automatically scales proportionately so it doesn't stretch any of the images. If you hold shift and decide to stretch an image, you could be squeezing it up um, or squeezing it a bit too a bit too wide. And that doesn't really get, look good when you um, when you size it up. So we want to keep we want to keep alt held and it'll scale around its center, it'll scale proportionately, and it'll drop to something like that. So as you can see. It is on the artboard with its edges under. Sometimes, if you have an image that's too big, it can appear on top of your artboard like that. And that simply means that because it's so big, it hasn't dropped into the artboard. And you can fix that. You see in your layers panel on the right hand side here, that texture sits above the artboard. You can just drop that underneath your title of artboard. And that now means it's sitting on your artboard. So we'll maybe position that slightly off center. So at the moment, that is sitting on top of every other layer. So that is the only thing you can see. And um, we'll rename this whilst we're here. Texture. Now the fact that it's the only thing you can see is okay at the moment, because what we're going to do is we're going to change the blend mode of this layer. Now, just above the layers panel, there is a little drop down, which by default is always set to normal. If you click on that, there are a list of options um, that show up the different blend modes that we can apply to this layer. So as you scroll down them and roll over them, 
you get a preview of what each will look like. Now this is a particularly useful tool in Photoshop because it gives you that ability to blend two different types of images together. So if we were to say to be doing something that um, we want it to look like it was graffiti or if it had been painted on a wall or something like that, you would maybe have a brick texture or a wall texture and this is a sort of process you would go through, you would look at the blend modes and see which one basically gave you the most realistic impression. The one that we want to select today is Multiply. Um, and now that looks quite dark at the moment, but alongside uh, the blend mode, we have an opacity drop down, opacity slider. We're going to go for 30% and just a very, very subtle sort of green that you can see is applied, that sort of cracked look across uh, his torso there. And that, basically, we're just going to go for a little bit of a grunge look, a little bit of an aged look, um, something that maybe makes it look a bit like an aged photograph or something like that. So these concrete textures, you can also find sort of poster textures, you can find photo paper textures, but sometimes I find that they don't really have the required grit that makes it, that, that grain that just makes it look a little bit aged. So once we've applied that, blend mode, multiply, and the opacity, we're just going to lock the layer. Now at the moment, the texture layer is sitting on top of everything, which means the texture is applied to everything that is underneath it. If we were to move our cutout above it, you see that, that texture no longer affects the cutout, it only affects the things that are behind it. However, we want it to affect the cutout as well, so we're going to keep that drop there. The only one that we do want to move up, and this will probably become apparent in the next video, is this white gradient, which we want sat on the top to just kind of hide some of the grain at the top there. As I say, it doesn't look great at the moment, but it will become apparent in the next video why we've done this. So we'll lock that one in place there. Now the next thing that we want to do is play about with an actual cutout itself. So at the moment, although we've got a bit of a texture on it and although we've changed the order of the layers, it's still the same cutout that's, that's sat in the image. So we want to change a little bit about the color of this image. So at the moment, we're working with the original image, the original colors and the conditions in which the photo was taken. So we see we've got our sort of light at the top here. Um, light clearly coming from this top left direction, which is partly why we've gone with this white up here. But we can change some of the aspects of the, the colour. So the top half of them looks a little bit warmer than the bottom half. So it's just got that sort of yellowish um, appearance due to the lighting. Whereas the bottom half's got a slightly darker and maybe even little tints of sort of purple and, and blues in there just due to his tattoos. So if we go up to image in the top left here and click that, we have a drop down with adjustments in it. Now, these adjustments are similar to any that you have maybe come across before, even out with Photoshop. So any types of photo adjustments that you might do on, on Instagram or on your iPhone that are just standard um, photo alterations that you can make. So we have brightness, contrast, Levels and curves are two different ones. Exposure, uh, vibrance, hue and saturation, color balance, you can change it to black and white, you can put a photo filter on top of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into hue and saturation first. So this is the options that show up when we open a hue and saturation. Hue can change basically the color of the entire image. So if we've got up to 100, we've got, got them looking green, down to purple, um, and that can operate in the slider there. We're going to keep it at zero. Saturation controls how intense the colors appear. We're going to go with minus 20 for saturation, although it isn't overly saturated at the moment, but what we're going to do later on is going to Basically, it'll look a lot better if we desaturate a little bit just now. Another thing to notice about the hue and saturation is that 
this drop down here that says master applies these effects to this whole image. So our, our whole our whole layer, um, when we have master selected, this applies a hue, saturation and lightness to the whole image. If we look at the drop down, we have got a variety of colors here. So if I were to pick reds and change the hue of the reds, that's probably not a good example because the whole image was kind of red. Uh, if I go to yellows and I pick the hue, I change the hue for just the yellows, it only affects the yellow colors that Photoshop is detecting. So basically these drop downs allow you to be quite flexible with where you change the color in each of these. Now given that we said that the top half of the image was quite warm and I had quite a bit of sort of yellows and an orange feel about it. What we want to do is maybe darken down some of the areas down here where we're seeing a little bit of the magenta, a little bit of blue. So if we jump into magentas at the moment and desaturate those, you'll see a massive difference there, but there probably is a slight one. If we darken them, we should just see a very, very slight difference in the tattoos. And we'll do the same for the blues. And we'll just remove remove that color. And we may as well do signs as well. What we're going to do later on will show that this has probably been a little bit of a worthwhile thing to, to show you. So if we hit OK, we now have an image looking slightly like this. So it looks a little bit desaturated. We've taken some of the colors out of it. Um, and now what we want to do is change the blend mode of our cutout layer. So again, this gives you a lot of flexibility. When you combine blend modes, you can get some really, really nice effects. So we're going to go down to luminosity for this one, which is right down the bottom. And that basically allows the gradient of our background and allows the light of the background that we've created to show through the subject. Um, and that just kind of complements basically the, the drama of the image and the lighting that we are going to create um, in the next video, that, that will really, really enhance that effect. So we've got our image here with its luminosity applied. Now, although we have the cutout on top and it definitely looks a lot more integrated into its background, there are a few things that we can do to make it look even more part of the image. So. What we're going to do next is we're going to select our blur tool over here, which is a teardrop shape. So if we select our blur tool, this is a pretty self-explanatory tool. As long as we have our layer selected, anything that's underneath this that we apply the brush to will appear blurrier. It will sort of take away the sharpness of the pixel pixels and we will lose some detail in the image. So it's particularly useful for sort of blending some of the hard edges of a cutout sometimes. Um, so what we're going to do is we have our image selected. We're going to select our brush at the top here in a similar way that we would select a paintbrush. We probably want to go with a soft round, something quite small, like 15 pixels. And our mode, which I think by default is set to normal, we're going to have to lighten. And we're just going to sort out some of the edges around the hair. So what you can do, I don't know if I mentioned this in the last one, but the square brackets on your keyboard can increase and decrease the size of your brush. So you don't have to keep jumping up here every time you want to get a bit that's kind of a little bit fiddly. So we're going to go just around the edges of the hair here. And it's not a massive difference that you're probably seeing straight away. but it is just slightly killing off that harsh line that we had going around and it improves the overall effect of the image. It does seem like a very, very small detail, but it will improve the overall appearance. So once we've done that on the layer, the actual image layer below, we also want to click on the mask layer because remember that is actually the bit that is covering 
So that essentially has a greater bearing on how sharp the line looks because the mask is essentially what's covered in the bit below. So if we want to just grab that layer and then we'll go around again, you'll see a slight little bit of darkening around the edge and that's just because we are blurring the bit that is covering the background. And that just makes it look a little bit more natural if the line is less sharp. So we want to apply the same sort of thing. Once we've gone around the hair, we want to stay on the mask layer and we want to just go slightly around the tops of his arms and shoulder where we had some of the cutout before. As those are probably the most prominent, especially where you know the white light is hitting the top of his shoulders. That is where the greatest contrast between the cutout and the background exists. And if we can kind of blur that line, it will make a great difference to the overall appearance. Just going to work our way around the edges. It, this doesn't need to be every single edge of the cutout. It's just the ones that, you know, to your eye initially appear more prominent than the others. So especially, I think, I think down here with the dark background starts to creep in. It's quite clearly a harsh line there, so we just want to blur it off ever so slightly, and it just kind of has it disappear into that background, which looks a lot more natural. We'll do a little bit in this underarm as well. In fact, that, that dark line doesn't really do it any favour, so we'll, we'll undo that one. What we'll do next is, with our mask layer selected, we want to right-click and subtract mask from selection. Now, that doesn't actually affect the mask itself. It just gives you a selection of our cutout. So what we have here is a selection of the cutout and the reason that we want that is we're going to create a new layer and we're going to call this one Dennis Rodman Shadows. And the reason for this is whilst we've already played with the contrast and the brightness and the saturation, which has given us a, a bit more depth to the image and a bit more drama, we want to probably accentuate some of that contrast a little bit more and introduce a little bit more shadow, especially down the bottom here, where the background is dark, so that it looks a little bit more like that his cutout is supposed to be part of this background. Again, it's all about just enhancing that appearance of realism in the image. So now that we have that selected and our new layer, what we want to do is go over to the left hand side here and get our brush tool. Now again, just using a, a similar brush to the one that we've used before, but we want to make it quite a small one, maybe something around that size. We want to have black selected as our colour, so we just drop right down to the bottom there. And we want to have our opacity set to around 10%. It's important that you probably, when we're drawing, when we're layering shadows on, we don't want to have our opacity set to something like 50%, because if we start drawing shadows here, that's a very, very prominent line. And we want to use a very, very light, uh, light fill and layer it up over time to make it look a little bit more natural. So we'll start near the bottom here, especially on the underside of his arms here, which if we are paying attention to where this light is coming from in the photograph up here, these bits would be naturally dark alongside the background that we've created. So we want to kind of enhance that appearance. And we're just going to draw in on this new shadows layer. We just want to build up very slowly, click by click, the shadows underneath the arm here. And again on this left, uh, right hand side, sorry. 
especially right into that darker gradient that we have at the bottom. Now you don't want to go too far with this. We want to create a very, very high contrast appearance, but we don't want to cover the full image in, in big dark paintbrush marks. So we just be very, very careful where we're using it. And you probably want to use it on parts of the image that are already dark, just to darken them down a little bit more. But we can be quite, we can be a little bit creative here and maybe accentuate some of, some of his features there. If we are doing the underside of the arm here, for instance, and especially in with the armpit, I think that'd be quite dark. We can maybe add a little bit of definition into that shoulder there, just by using the shadows. We also want to go up, and I think we'll do a little bit on this side of his face and underside of his neck. Just layering it up nice and lightly. That one's maybe a bit too much there. Just layering it up nice and lightly. And we'll do a little bit inside of his head there. It can sometimes be difficult to tell when you're so close in if you've overdone it or not. So worth zooming out to check every so often. Yeah, that's maybe okay. Let me touch up this side of the arm here, just underneath it. Right, so now that we've done that, we want to hit Command D or Control D, I think, on the PC to deselect that layer. Now, just to prove how much of an impact that has made to the image, I'll turn this layer off and you can switch it back on and off and you can just see how his arms especially blend so much more naturally into that background and how the appearance of the light coming from up here is really, really enhanced by the shadows that we've just put on. I might actually tidy up this dark gradient layer that we made in the last video and just bring with a bigger brush again 10% just layer some of the shadows on in the background as well to darken that down to almost black where his arm meets it. Like we have on this side here, we want to try and achieve that here. What we can maybe do is, seeing as that bit on his hand is a little bit lighter, if we, we'll lock this layer just now because I think that's dark enough, if we go back to our cutout layer and make sure that we have the image part selected, there's another tool called the burn tool, which does darken up selected areas of an image, but it's you don't want to use it too extensively as it can have quite a damaging effect in the image. It can blow pixels um, sort of really, it'll really, really darken them down and create some blotch areas in your image, but we can use it sparingly here, I think. Um, just on the underside of his hand to get rid of that line. But you see you see where I've touched it on the shorts there. That can really, really darken some of these areas down. But if I were to sit and do it over the middle of his number there, you start to see how if you use it three or four times, you can get some really, really blown out pixels. So we want to keep it to a bit of a minimum, but it's a good tool, especially when we're working on something this dark to kind of blend that, just blend that into the background there. So, with that done, we have our texture in and we've given our photo a little bit of an aged look. Our graphic and the lighting is appearing a lot more consistent. So we're hopefully ready to move on to the next stage. Um, this is the end of video two. And I'm just taking it slowly um, bit by bit to ensure that you can follow along. If you have any questions, again, just drop them in the comments and I'll try my best to answer those. In the next video, we're gonna be looking at blending options and filters. 
So blending options are slightly different to blend modes. And they have a similar sort of function in the way that they help a specific layer blend into into the background or apply a lot of different effects but they work in a different way so we'll be covering blending options and filters and we're going to finish off the image with a sort of stadium effect adding some lighting and some text on along the top there so hopefully you can join in for that one and again like i say any questions just pop them in the comments and i'll be happy to help thank you